came into the lab yesterday morning. Can you see what happened? This poor old plastic skeleton. He's a little bit bendy. Look, his, his arm came off. His arm had fallen off. And that reminded me that, oh yeah, I've been meaning to make a video about the elbow joint. So we are going to look at the bones of the elbow joint, the articulating surfaces, the lumpy bumpy bits right here. We've looked at these bones in detail before. We've looked at the muscles of the elbow joint. So we're going to be looking at the articulations here and the ligaments and the things that happen here. Um, I'll save the bursae for another day because to talk about the bursa, uh, we need to look at soft tissue. So we'd be here all day and no doubt this video will be long enough already. Elbow joint. Okay, what do we got? Well, we need to think about the movements. We need to think about the bones. And we need to think about the ligaments holding them together. So the movements of the elbow joint. Well, okay, the elbow joint itself is actually a hinge. So we have the radius and ulna bones. So radius is on the thumb side. It's lateral in the anatomical position, radius and ulna. And we have the humerus up here, the humerus. And the humerus is going to articulate with both the radius and the ulna in, in a hingy sort of way to give flexion at the elbow joint and extension, flexion and extension. And that's what happens at the elbow joint. But also because we're looking at the articulating surfaces, something else happens nearby, which is this. Okay, so this is pronation and supination, pronation of the forearm supination of the forearm, right? And what's happening there is that the, uh, the ulna is staying in place and the radius spins around it. So this isn't a movement of the elbow joint, it's a movement of the radius about the ulna, but it has some articulating surfaces at the elbow joint, so we'll talk about it. And we're going to look at the ligaments here holding all this together, which will also help explain that bit. Okay, so bones, movements. Uh, you can palpate some of this yourself. So the humerus here flares at the elbow joint. Uh, and these flared bits, these sticky outy bony bits, these are the epicondyles. Uh, the con condyle is a knuckle, right? So the condyles would be the articulating surfaces. The epicondyles are upon the condyles, these sticky outy bits. So we have a medial epicondyle and a lateral epicondyle. Okay, so the radius is on the thumb side, so the radius is lateral, the ulna is on the medial side then. And we can see if we look at the articulating surfaces here, we've kind of got two articulating surfaces, right? This bit here, this knuckle here gets called the capitulum. And this is articulating with the head of the radius. Now the head of the radius is particularly cool because it's a circle, which is what lets it spin, right? So it's got this it's a circle with a depression in it. And that is articulating with the capitulum, the little head, the capitulum of the humerus. So that sits in the, and it does that, right? <laughs> now it's really the ulna that's doing most of the proper hingy work with the humerus. So the, the, the part of the humerus here that's articulating with the ulna is the trochlea. Trochlea meaning pulley. We see the word trochlea elsewhere around the body. So the trochlea is shaped perfectly for the ulna to wrap around. And look how it wraps around. It's a really deep wrapping around of the ulna, right? So the, the ulna, this bit here, which you can also palpate very easily here, this is the olecranon. This is what the triceps inserts into. So the olecranon is this sticky out bit of ulna that's wrapping around the trochlea of the humerus, okay? So if you palpate that, you know where you are. That bit of bone is wrapping around the trochlea of the humerus, and that is largely where the hinge joint is. See what I mean, poor fellow, he's 
sinking down again. Okay, so this is a an ulna taken away from this. Um, and you can see this curving here. So the this is the trochlear notch, which is going to articulate with the trochlea of the humerus. And this notch then is formed by the olecranon and the coronoid process. This sticky up bit here, this coronoid, uh, coronal crane wrapping around. So the coronoid process and the olecranon come together to form a trochlear notch, which articulates with the trochlea and gives the, the hinge joint. That's not the end of the cool. All right, so look what happens. I'll get that out of the way. Look what happens when we maximally extend Oh, and we maximally extend the elbow joint. The olecranon sits into a perfectly made little fossa for it, the olecranon fossa. And that's what gives that locked, right? You know how you extend your elbow joint and it locks into position. Kachunk. That is the that is the kachunk. Beautiful bit of anatomy. The electron in the electron fossa, ulna humerus. All right. If we look, so this is the anterior humerus. There's posterior there. So that's the electron fossa. If we look on the anterior humerus, there are another couple of little groovy bits. Groovy. And I said that was the coronoid process. All right. So as we flex the elbow. The coronoid process goes into this coronoid fossa. So, so that's as far as you can flex your elbow because those two bony bits come together. And take away the ulna, put back the radius. There's our radial head, beautifully round with a little depression in it, sitting in the capitulum there. Likewise, it doesn't really matter how swizzled the radius is. As the, as the radius, as we flex the radius to the humerus, the radius also goes into a radial fossa. Isn't that neat? So, you know, I mean, you've got extension, flexion. So flexion is, it's those bony bits coming together and saying like, you can, you can flex no further. Okay, humerus. Olecranon fossa, coronoid fossa, radial fossa, which relate to the other bony bits, the olecranon, the coronoid process, and the head of the radius. Okay, uh, so th well, there's those bony joints, but of course we've also got to think about how the radius and the ulna go together at the, it's like trying to hold chopsticks, at the proximal radio-ulna joint, right, because this is at the elbow end, the distal radio-ulna joint would be at the wrist end, right? At the proximal radio-ulna joint, the head of the radius, that circle, articulates with the ulna at the radial notch. So the ulna, so there's the coronoid process there, it has a radial notch that receives the head of the radius, so that the radius can, can, the radius can rotate about the ulna, whichever, yeah, bones. How do we tie all those bones together so they don't fall apart like that? Ligaments. Now, remember that this is a synovial joint. So the synovial joint is surrounded by a synovial capsule. That's what keeps all the synovial fluid in and holds everything together and helps make it a synovial joint. And the synovial joint then is thickened in some places, forming ligaments. However, that said, the most, most fun ligament around here is this annular ligament. So, no, sorry, <laughs> humerus, ulna, radius. So this is a right arm. This ligament here is wrapping around the neck 
of the radius, and the head of the radius is up against the humerus. So this is the annular ligament. It's a ring wrapping around the neck of the radius, which is a little bit more slender, a little bit narrower than the head. So that is what holds the neck and the head in place when the radius rotates about the ulna. The ulna isn't moving. This is, this is pronation and supination and pronation and supination. So the annular ligament of the radius. And the annular ligament then is running from the ulna around and then back to the ulna. But we can see that it's also blending with this other ligament here. So we have a ligament medially and a ligament laterally on either side of the elbow joint and these are the collateral ligaments. The one on the radial side is the radial collateral ligament and the one on the ulna side is the ulna collateral ligament. Pretty good so far, right? So the annular ligament of the radius blends with the radial collateral ligament. And you can see a couple of bands there. If we look on the ulna side, the ulna side's got three bands. It's got, what, anterior, posterior, and oblique bands making kind of this triangular collateral ligament of, on the ulna side. So you can see where these ligaments are running. So on the ulna side, look, this is the ulna is medial. So this is the medial epicondyle of the humerus. Here's the olecranon. So it's running between the medial epicondyle of the humerus and the olecranon of the ulna. And it's running between the medial epicondyle of the humerus. And here, in there, is the coronoid process, or the coronoid process of the, of the ulna. But it's these ligaments then that are supporting the synovial capsule, helping to hold the joint together, and also helping to form this proximal uh, radio ulna joint. All right. And don't forget, of course, that the muscles are also helping hold joints together and, and that sort of thing. But those are the ligaments of the elbow joint. So what can go wrong with all of this? Well, we've got lots of sticky, aty, bony bits, which are important to this joint working. So you could fall and land on the elbow and smash, break, fracture um, some of these sticky outy bony bits, which is why elbow pads can be useful if you're doing things like, you know, skateboarding, like to land, bang, straight on your elbows onto a hard surface. Um, but you could also, the, um, the radius, because remember the radius has got that annular ligament holding the head in place, you could pull the radius and the head of the radius out of that annular ligament, which would be a subluxation of the head of the radius and maybe a dislocation as well. This most commonly happens in kids. You know, when you're, you're swinging kids around, wee, wee. Uh, if they're not like using their muscles and brace and you really jerk, you can tunk, pull the radius out through that annular ligament and that will need to be um, put by where it's supposed to be. Um, so that's, that's a risk. And that makes sense now that you understand the anatomy. And the other one is, um, so, you know, if you land with outstretched arms and the elbows are locked, then that force is transferred pretty effectively up to the shoulder and can cause problems in the shoulder. But if you land with bent elbows, it's possible that you could drive the ulna and the radius posteriorly and then dislocate the ulna and the radius posteriorly relative to the humerus, right? So if, 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 if the elbow is locked, it transfers load really well, but if the elbow is flexed, you know, it's, there's a risk of posterior dislocation of, of, of these two, the ulna and the radius relative to the humerus. So hopefully those clinical jobbies make a bit more sense. Now you understand the anatomy of the elbow joint and how it's, hold, how it's held together. Okay, that's it. So we've looked at uh, the bony bits of the elbow joint, we're most interested in the sticky outy bits today because of the way it, it gives us flexion and extension and limits it. We also looked at the articular surfaces and we looked at pronation and supination because something happens here. And we looked at the ligaments, the elbow joint. Um, if you want to know more, we've also looked at the muscles of the elbow joint. Go and look that one up. And we've also looked at the blood supply around here as well. I'm pretty confident we've done that one. So go and look that one up as well if that's the sort of thing you're interested in. See you next week.